Okay, so of you guys attending, do you, have you guys been doing vendor events or is this an interest and you're wanting some more information? And you guys can go ahead and unmute yourselves or type it out in the chat. And if you have been doing some vendor events, what, um, what questions do you have or challenges have you had that you're hoping that Carla will have some great insight on tonight? <laughs> Yay. Okay, so if you guys think of questions, feel free to go ahead and type them out in the chat. Tammy, following up with people. Yes, we're gonna talk about that. So. Carla is here with me tonight, and Carla is a silver, and she lives um, up in the Kansas City area. I can't, is it Spring Hill that you're at? Yeah, Spring Hill. And her husband's a pilot. You wanna go ahead and tell him a little bit about you? I would put Dylan in there. No, sure. Um, yeah, this is, I'm going into my sixth year with Young Living, and my husband's a pilot, and I have Three kiddos, seven, five, and two, and 25 weeks with number four. Um, and then I own a all natural um, daycare. So I stay really busy <laughs> with everything, but um, I love doing vendor events. And um, so it's kind of sometimes my me time. <laughs> um, and I'm, I've taken kids though before to my vendor events as well. So a little mix of both, but I do. I do enjoy doing the vendor events. Um, Carla, I'm, I'm going to ask you some questions and then um, if I have something to add, I will. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yep. So, where Debbie England if it had posted earlier today in the Anointing Nation some ideas of where to find some vendor events and some ideas to get them from. Do you have any addition? Did you see that post? I did not see that post. Okay. Um, she recommended, you know, to check with Facebook and you can do searches because it comes up. Um, it comes up in different area events and things. So how do you go about finding the ones that you've participated in? Um, a lot of mine have been local. Um, I've traveled a little bit. Um, my family's from Parsons, so anywhere between Kansas City and Parsons, I've kind of done some. Um, Facebook is a really good one in your like local, um, if you have like local town Facebook groups as well. Um, and then I'm also in like a couple of Kansas and like Southeast Kansas vendor groups. And so people will post vendors, um, shows coming up and you can inquire like if there's a Young Living booth already. And so, and if anybody wants me to add them to those groups, I can do that as well. Uh, but really just, I find my local events to be, I don't travel a whole, whole lot. So just kind of hearing the local events in my local Facebook groups are probably where I find the majority of them. Now, I know that um, last year when I was specifically trying to get out of town to do some vendor events and get some new contacts, um, that's all I did was go in and looked at vendor events or craft fairs and things is what I looked for. And then I just personally reached out to whoever was the organizer on that Facebook account and asked, you know, if I could participate. And some of them only require, only allowed for home crafted items. And so that's what I set my booth up as. And I just set it up as um, Suzanne's, um, the Sozo Spa and Wellness which is what I do from the home. And so then I had some items that I had made up and sold them there. And it got an opportunity to talk that, we, you know, I taught some classes on other holistic items and got names from that way too. So that's kind of a, a way in if they won't allow, um, 
I don't know, direct sales and things like that. Cause some vendor events will not. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So do you have a favorite that you diffuse or do you even diffuse at the events that you I go to? Do. I always try, like if they offer electricity, I always take them up on that. Um, I've had to do some without it, uh, just cause they didn't offer electricity. And I really think my shows do better when I have the diffusers going. Um, and I always usually diffuse these. And so it's just a great one cause you're around a lot of people. It's just a very homey fall winter scent. And so, um, it, it attracts a lot of people to your booth. They're like, Ooh, what's that smell? Or you'll have people that are like, Oh, I recognize that scent. And so, plus, it's one in the starter kit, so that's always a great then conversation with, um, yeah, I'm diffusing thieves, and then when you're talking about the starter kit, you're like, um, also, the one I'm diffusing comes in the kit, and so it's just kind of, it ties it kind of together for them, so. I agree. I've had people, when they first walk in and come up to me, they'll be like, I knew you were here because I could smell you when I entered. I've had people put me like by the door, like if I'm a returning vendor, because they're like, we just want like people to smell you when, when you walk, when they walk in the door. So um, I've had requests like that too. Like they'll put me by the door, which is also a great like location at a vendor event because you're getting the people that walk right in. So and so do you have a preference that you ask for besides up front? Do you ask for by a wall or in the middle or have you found one? I don't know. I usually like usually people don't ask and I don't usually request. Um, I actually kind of like being um, by other people like kind of in the middle because not only are you getting the you know the people coming to shop but you have all the vendors that are around you that you can talk to. And I've had, I've had girls come back and be like, I sat by you at that vendor event all day. And like, I was miserable. And then I sat by you and like my sinuses cleared up and what were you diffusing? And then I had one girl message me at like two in the morning telling me that story. And then she bought a kit. Um, and so it's just a good testimony too about with the people around you. So I don't always just want like an end or something. Cause I don't have then as many people to network with. So do you ever contact the other vendors or do you take little gifts or anything? Or you know, I, I haven't done that before. I've seen other people do it, um, but I have not, I've not done that. I have done that at some shows and like I took little bags of Epsom salt and stress away around to each of the vendors one time and introduced myself. Um, it was a good connection. And I felt like it made for good rapport because it was a two day event. And so I did get some names from that, but um, it's just all hit and miss. Like mm -hmm. you just never know which event is going to be great and which one maybe not. So mm -hmm. Have you found that? Yeah, I actually, um, I really prefer the smaller shows and a lot of people they want in the like huge shows lots of people but I really find my smaller shows I do the best because you you know they only have so many booths to look at and you really get to like talk to the people and instead of you know oh I just want to get to all the booths and see kind of what's out there um and so I actually really do prefer the smaller ones and again like I've had some events I did an event um it was all day but it was like a conference so the people would go like to sessions and then come back and like shop the vendors and go to a conference and you like in between the sessions we got to know the other vendors as well um and so that was really cool too because it's not just the people coming in they're you know you're actually making more of those relationships than just someone walking by your booth um at random so uh yeah i prefer i prefer the smaller shows and a lot of times i mean well all these other vendors have that entrepreneurial heart as well. And so I was really surprised, like some of the questions that I got from vendors versus just shoppers. Mm -hmm. And it was um, those connections and, and signups from other vendors in the long term seem to be um, stronger. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sometimes. So as far as end up being business. Right. Yep. 
because they they do kind of know you know especially if they're in other direct cells or something they kind of know the questions to ask or um you know curious about this and that and i just love how young living kind of is set apart anyways and so they're like oh well, with my company you have to buy this much every so many months or something so it's kind of cool to learn about the other companies and then they get to learn about you and um yeah definitely they have more of the business mindset if you're looking for like business builders more than just maybe a customer. Do you take clip kits or inventory to your shows? I have flip kits on hand now. Um, I think that's been a really good investment to have because I've had people come up and they're, they're sick or they're fighting something right then and there. And so they're like, I don't want to order it. Like, you know, if you had a kid on hand, I'd buy it today. And I'm like, well, actually I do. So, and then I kind of started setting them out. Like I don't just have them under my table. Like I actually have them setting out. Um, so people can see that, oh, maybe she has something available today. Um, and then the inventory, I don't buy extra inventory to have, but like I have my stash. And so like I save back my oils, I don't want to sell, but I put out some of the ones like if I have extra lavender or feeds or something and someone comes by and wants to buy that, then I will sell that to them. And I always charge them at the retail cost. Um, but I don't personally like invest a ton of money in inventory because I don't want to set with it. Um, but if it's stuff I'm already using and it's on my shelf in my stock, then I'll put it out there for if someone else needs it. That's what I do too. And you know, I, I don't want to, I want to encourage you guys, if you're interested to do it within your personal budget. I have heard other women that have spent $20,000 on a vendor event, and that is not a possibility for the majority of the people. Mm -hmm. And so, especially if you're going to smaller shows, local shows where people see you and know you, don't feel like you cannot do this unless you have all the stuff. You can have what you have and still make a connections and um it's great to have the flip kits there especially for that those people that want to walk home with it that is kind of rare it doesn't it's not like i personally haven't been flooded with all these people that that can make a decision on the spot for that amount of money especially if they're at a show is what i've noticed and but it has happened but um, don't let that be a discouragement. Just take it as this is your first connection and your follow-up is where you're probably going to have the most success to get those sales. So don't look at each person as if a possible sell as much as a possible relationship that you want to, to make those days. And most, like most of my vendor shows, I don't have anybody sign up at my vendor shows. Um, but it is the follow-up. But my very first vendor show I did, which actually kick-started me into, oh, maybe I could do this as the business. I had just the starter kit. I had nothing else because I had just gotten into it not very long. And I actually had seven people sign up at the vendor show. So, um, so yeah, you don't need a ton of stuff. Like, like I said, I just had the starter kit. And just from that, the people were interested and signed up. But most of my shows, I am just like – you never know how you're going to do because um, like you said, like people don't have a couple hundred dollars to drop on a kit right there. But if you get those contacts and start those relationships, then I've seen a lot of people come from those um, just by building those relationships. So. I agree. Um, Rochelle asked the question, doing a, does it, doing a flip kit, does the person have an account then? Yes. You actually can go in, sign them up, give them your kit that you have on hand, but have their kit sent to your house. So you're just basically trading them. They still have to pay shipping, except for this month. If you're doing flip kits this month, then you would get free shipping. Um, but they still have to pay for shipping because they're shipping that kit to you. And then make sure that you get their login information, and their password and all of that. So you can go back in and change their address and make sure to take, um, make sure there's not um, your payment on there if you're using your payment, which I don't recommend. I have done it before, but no, that's how that works. Okay. 
what are some things that you cannot do at the vendor bin? There's, do you want to touch on that? Um, I mean, I don't know that I know all the rules, but I do know like if you make homemade things, you're not supposed to have them on the same table as Young Living, especially if Young Living sells the same things. So um, like I couldn't make a bug repellent and advertise it um, as such because Young Living makes a bug repellent. And then also if you make homemade things, you can't like, I can't put thieves on it. Cause that's a trademark name for Young Living. I'd have to list out like cinnamon, clove, rosemary, those on the, on my products. But, um, what else is there? <laughs> and I would definitely check the, the proceed, the, what is it called? Policy the proceed, and procedures. Policies and procedures, because it has changed. It feels like almost every year. Um, hold on. came up one time. Do you see him? They can all see you. So say hi. 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 This is kid number five. This is Wesley. So um, it seems, and I'll have to look for this year, but we could not have like the reference guide out on the table also with Young Living. That's correct. Too, yeah. And because it, um, you know, it, it's that conflict of interest and promising things that Young Living doesn't want. Your literature is supposed to be like compliant if you're advertising Young Living. So the reference guide obviously would not be compliant because it's giving you remedies and claiming things. So um, yeah, so you're not supposed to have the reference guides out either. Yeah. And so anything that you're handing out, you make sure that it is 100% compliant you can share your stories and be 100% honest when you're talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, um, when they come into your booth, that you just don't want them to walk home with something that's not compliant. Okay. And then, is it worth diffusing at an outdoor event? Um, I do. Like, if I have options for electricity, I do, because people still, like, close to you and walking by, they still, they still smell it. So I had comments about it because I thought the same thing, like, am I just wasting this, you know, but I definitely had people comment on it. So I know they can still smell it when they're around you. So that's awesome. I don't think I've worked an outside one that I had electricity yet. Okay. So that's good. So to know. Just, even if you're not diffusing, like, even if they can't smell the scent, just the lights and stuff on your diffusers kind of draw people in as well. So. Yes. Yeah. And diffuse for bugs. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Okay. Anybody just see it on the so do you have any tips on how to set up or anything that you felt was really drawing that worked well? Um, I try to keep mine simple and classy. So um, I always go with like either a neutral or a black tablecloth. And then I bought like a sign through Vistaprint um, that just has my name on it and Young Living. And then um, I always have the starter kit displayed because it's a really good talking point then because people want to know what it is. And then um, another thing I display is a bottle of Ninja because people always then are curious about that and that's a good reason. And then how the kit comes with two packages um, of that. And then sometimes I'll have like some oils setting out and especially the starter kit oils that they can smell because they always want to like pick them up and smell them. Um, and then that's probably my main things. And then, uh, definitely business cards too on your table that they can pick up and, um, usually like a brochure or something that has the starter kit and kind of what the oils are good for. 
Um, it's usually on my booth as well. So that's my main things. <laughs> I also try, I try to do a little bit more hype and put groupings together on those hype areas. So maybe like the thieves kit together or, or you know, a lot of the thieves items together on one section or you know, it just depends. I unfortunately am like the queen of overdoing it. I, every time I take all this stuff and then I set up the table and I keep looking at it and end up putting more stuff underneath the table. And I still, it's like, I get so excited that I just, I take too much stuff every time. I, I always do the same thing and then half of it's under my table, but I kind of like to have the options, but at the same time, I'm like, I did not need to bring all this stuff. <laughs> So this is my entire house, enjoy. Because <laughs> I'm like, what if someone wants to, you know, see this or smell this? <laughs> but do you do drawings? I do not do a drawing. I have a um, like a sign up thing there, and the way I get people's names is I tell them about like an upcoming class, or I'll have like either a Facebook class planned or an in person class depending on where I'm at, like if it's a local event and I know I can follow up with a class that way. Um, that way, you know, I tell people like, you know, if you're interested more in these oils, like I do these classes and you can sign up. Um, I'm getting actual people that are interested in the stuff. And I feel like drawings just draw in people that want free stuff. So you might have 200 names in there and <laughs> like, and then it's overwhelming to follow up with that many people. And, um, so I'd much rather have like seriously two or three names on my list at the end of the day than 200 in a drawing, because then I can take those two or three and follow up. And those people actually were expressed interest and, um, wanted to learn more. Um, and then it's easier on me too. So I'm not <laughs> so overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, I have all these people to get in contact with now. So. I agree. And um, what made me sick to my stomach is that um, I was so afraid somebody would win a bottle of this oil and not truly appreciate it or use it or just toss it. And one of the mistakes I made when we first started is I had made up tons of little bottles of samples mm -hmm. to hand out. And that was a, an expense that did not reap the return that I hoped it would. I do have I, I gladly hand out a drop of peppermint or a drop of stress away, or if they're, they mention their feet are hurting or something, I ask them if they would like to experience the pan away or try something while they're there at the booth, but I don't send mm -hmm. samples with everybody anymore. Um, how I get names is I have a little card that they fill out and I put on there, I have them circle whether they prefer to be contacted through Facebook message, like Facebook or texting. Mm -hmm. And if texting to leave their text number. And now that I'm using Project Broadcast, I'm planning to do things a little bit different this year. But this worked for me when it, because I'm not super technically gifted. So my little card says, if you would like more information about any of these classes, circle the class you're interested in. And I have on there um, oils in the Bible, oils in the bedroom, winter wellness, um, back to school, health, pretty much, oh, and emotions, anything at all that I can possibly teach a class on or know somebody that will, goes on that card. And then, um, or even, and I've got just an introduction class on there. And that way I can just reach out to those people over individually specific classes mm -hmm. so somebody says i'm interested in an, in helping support emotions then i will send them a text and say hey i'm going to be teaching a class on emotions i met you at the vendor event in greenville and you had mentioned wanting some more information this is some of the stuff we'll be talking about and going over and you know and then give them the link and a lot of times I've noticed that they can't come and they really are interested. They'll start that conversation back that I can't make it then. Are you going to do another one? And that just gives me an open door to start building that relationship like I would anybody else. 
Does anyone have an empty bottle of these? Oh, men, just kidding. So if anybody has an extra bottle of these household cleaner or a kit box, let Alexis know, okay? Perfect. And definitely empty, empty bottles are fine. I've taken plenty of empty bottles. I've, I don't know if this is actually compliant now that I'm saying it out loud, but I have mixed up bottles of Thieves Cleaner and still had them for sale, like the mixture in the squirt bottles for sale on the tables so people could try them. And I only charged because I think the, the rule is you can't really charge for the oil, but you can charge for your expenses for everything else. So I, I just charged like, they were plastic models, like $3 and I had 10 of them and they all sold almost immediately. For the I, um, I and then I was reading the rules. I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't do that. So now I actually, um, I buy the the packets of the Thieves Cleaner, and then I get like the spray bottles, and I'll like tie that together, and then um, sell them that way. So because I'm not repackaging the Thieves Cleaner, like it's already packaged, and then um, I just divide the cost of what you know that. The sample pack cost me and then that's what I put on there so that's um, awesome so yeah I have a lot of people that scoop up those <laughs> do you do vendor events all year round or do you focus on a certain time of year I started out just doing like fall and winter um I kind of had built up with um I had started doing a couple in the spring and then I started doing a couple in the summer I'm actually back though down to, I kind of cut a lot out this year. Um, and I'm, I was keeping though my fall ones. So, cause they do get to be sometimes time consuming or a lot of work. And so um, the summer ones were more outdoors, very hot kind of thing. So I've kind of backed out of some of those, um, but there is vendor events all year round. So if someone's wanting to do that, I find my, Towards the fall, they're a little bit better because people are obviously looking for gifts around the holidays. Um, so I've, yeah, I've kept those on my calendar, but. And do you feel, no, we already talked about that, the size. I, I agree with you on the size as far as, I almost enjoy a little bit of the smaller events because I don't feel like, like you said, people are as rushed to get to all the booths as fast as they can. And so, you know, even the farmer's market, if you guys have a local, I do several of the local vendor events here in town, and we're a small town. But for me, I feel like for $25 for a night to advertise is basically what I'm doing because most of the people come through, know who I am, they know I do oils, but I'm getting to advertise to a thousand to you know, 2,000 people, whoever goes through there, and they're seeing me again and being reminded and striking up conversations. There's also almost always local people that it's almost like that last reminder push to go ahead and sign up with somebody on our team. Mm -hmm. I've had that too. Like people are like, oh, I've been meaning to talk to you. And so I'm glad like you're here at this event. And so just seeing someone in person they'll strike up the conversation instead of, oh, I need to send them a message and then they forget or, or whatever. So yeah, it is a good, a good reminder <laughs> for the people. I do want to say, be positive. Um, at the risk of being negative, there was an, another oil company represented. There almost always is at the larger shows and one of the girls that came and talked to me that was in our team said that she had stopped by to talk to them and they were immediately degrading young living like they had nothing good to say about their product their their goal or their sales tactic was to destroy young living and so anytime 
that somebody comes and asks me at a vendor event what the difference is between um, such and such or Young Living, I only focus on the good of Young Living. I talk about seed to seal. I talk about how amazing the farms are, the, the foundations, just that I know exactly where that oil is coming from. And I've been there to those farms and I've met the farm hands that work there and love what they do because they take such great pride in it. And so, and it's great to be enthusiastic and offer them sample right there at your booth. Tell them about your favorite oil and why you love it, but just don't get caught up in the, the slander and the back and forth banter. No, yep. and I, I do the same thing. I'm like, you know, I don't really have much experience with that company. So, but I can tell you about Young Living and how awesome it is. And so, um, you know, you'll have to do your research between the two or whatever. But I just stay with, you know, this is why, you know, why I like Young Living and why I chose it. And I, I can't really talk, you know, about the other companies. So, yeah. And, and it's a put off to people too, to, if they're coming and asking you, they, they want to know about your company also. Um, and so the last thing is, do you have a system in place of how you follow up? Um, I mean, basically we touched kind of earlier on just, I have the names and then I'll send them. Like I, I try to have the class. So that's my first, you know, point of contact, I'll be like, I don't spam you with a bunch of things, but I'll contact you when my next class is or before the class or whatever. And so then I'll send them a message and, um, Hey, this class, like, is this night? It was really great to meet you. Um, let me know if you, you know, you want to invite. And so, um, that's basically how I do my follow-ups. And then, you know, if they don't respond, I might reach out to them one other time, but I just, I really try not to like, over bombard people so um and then i i also like i try to get their like either facebook or text because i'm honestly not a big phone person so um i feel like people respond to like better through those ways um because they can respond at their own time or you know check their calendar before they're just i don't know like you know if i can come or not so um that's, I guess that's kind of how I do my follow-ups. I'm very similar. Um, one thing that I'm working on getting all in place is um, my follow-up with the project broadcast. You can enter key words into project broadcast. If anybody doesn't know what project broadcast is, it's a texting service that it's like two cents a text, but you can do mass texting at one time, like send it out to a whole bunch of people. You do not have to use it, but you could, I'm working on the keywords to where if they would like more information on hormones, they can text, you know, take a picture, text hormones to my texting number, and that will automatically group them into the hormone group so that when I get ready to have the hormones class, I can just click hormones, and it will send that text out to everybody who is interested in the hormone class, rather than me have to go through and text individually, you know, 20 people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's always that group of people, especially the younger, more savvy group, that like being able to text because we're, we're used to that. I mean, text you know, Sonic at this number and you get a coupon and that. So I'm going to try that this year and see if that will work for me. Um, okay, so Alexis asked, is it worth bringing the non-star kit oils with me? Um, I, I bring my, I have a, the big aroma kit that has, I don't know, 120 some oils in it. And so I bring that whole kit with me and I keep it underneath the table. And I really try to only focus on the starter kit oils in general, but it is very important. Like if you're doing a kid's vendor event, 
then think about how you can promote that starter kit for kids. And, you know, if you met a mom that had the same struggles as you, then I would, I would absolutely be honest with them and tell them, hey, this is what we use. And I have empty roller bottles there that, you know, if there's somebody that I'm really connecting with and they're honestly wanting some help, then yes, I will send a roller bottle home with them because that's something I would do with my friend on Facebook. Or if I made a connection on Facebook, I would ask them, can I, can I send you a roller bottle so you can try this? So if you, you know, you make a connection with a mom and you want to share with her that you're using vetiver or cedarwood and you know, lavender orange for your kid. And this is what works for us. You know, just, and then just ask them, hey, if I give you this, can I get your number so that I can follow up with you and see how it's working out? Don't, don't waste that opportunity or lose that opportunity to where you don't have a, a chance to continue to educate her and help her. Do you guys have any other questions? I I know I am the I am really bad at procrastinating, so I will gather my vendor event stuff way too close to the event. Some of you are probably super organized, but um, if you can, if you're interested in it, I mean, you can probably reach out and find a vendor event tonight that's, that this is the biggest season for vendor events. They're, they're everywhere. Even in little shops, people are having shopping days. And um, so if you're interested, reach out to some, get it on your book, and then work your way backwards. So if you know that you've got four weeks of the vendor event, when do you need to place an order? Um, if you're wanting something specific to take with you. As far as tables, you can go as fancy as ordering a tablecloth with the Young Living logo, or you can just put something down. I, my, I have the same decorations at every booth because I mainly only do them during the Christmas shows. So I bought bed sheets that were the Buffalo plaid and they fit, there's the bed, the whole, you know, there's two sheets in there and the pillowcase and everything. So I bought a king size so I could cut it in half. And then I used the other two, you know, the pillowcases for decorations on the crates and things like that. So I don't have a Young Living branded tablecloth. Um, I don't know. What do you have, Carla? I just have plain black um, ones off of Amazon, and then I, I don't that I don't have branded Young Living, but I did buy like I don't know fifteen dollar Vista print sign mm -hmm. that I put on the front of it <clears throat> just to say like Young Living in my name, um, and then. Yeah, you can, like, some of the vendor events even let you, like, rent tables from them um, if you don't have a table to start out with. And But if you're planning to do multiple, it is probably worth, an, you know, to get your own table. They're not very expensive, and then you can, you know, take it to your different events. But, um, but yeah, I'm a procrastinator, too, so <laughs> I... Uh, I'm constantly, you know, and I'll like organize kind of at that event for the next event and, and that kind of thing. But, um, but yeah, just starting simple and just getting out there. Like you don't, you don't need a whole lot to get started. So. Um, one of the other tips that, um, like you want people to come into your booth. So if you have just a small space, don't put your table necessarily right up front where they're having, they can just walk on by and keep scanning. Put your table towards the back and then you can stand in front of the table and be asking questions, talking to people as they walk by, but you don't have to be that salesperson that's like, have you heard of oils? Have you heard of oils? <laughs> Come here. You can just ask people as they're walking by, hey, how's your day going? What's your favorite booth been so far? 
is it still raining when you came in? Is there, you know, hey, have you had found any good snacky, you know, boost while you're here? Honestly, I have made a really good friend because I met her because we started talking candy and she was in my booth. And we've kept in contact now for several years. So it's treat them like you would want to be treated if you're walking through a vendor show, not just pounced on, but just a conversation and a smile is great. Don't be careful not to be on your phone if you're not busy because you, you kind of close yourself off that way. You still want to be smiling, looking around. You could rearrange your table, walk a couple booths down to chit chat. But um, that's about the best tips that I can give you. Carla, can you think of anything else that we haven't? I did take a kid's table one time and had little pieces of Play-Doh out there, that homemade Play-Doh, and then they got to choose which oil to drop in it. And I'm not talking about a giant ball, like they were just small things of Play-Doh. And that way they could play and the mom could talk. And actually if the kids would sit down and play, then the mom would sometimes even get stuck there. Um, I have offered, the Vitaflex for the headache and sinus and taking my massage chair and on it. I've even done it with just a car. Uh, I've taken a scanner before, but I've also taken just a card chair. Or what are they called? A folding chair and set it out there with a sign in it that says five minute head massage. And I do the Vitaflex. People will let you talk as long as you possibly can. If you're rubbing their head, that's, Trick. And so I just, that's when I bombard them with all kinds of great information. <laughs> no, yeah, I think you, I think you've covered a lot. If anybody else has any questions that we haven't covered. Um. Okay. So good luck. You you guys, it's a lot of fun. If you think it's an interest of yours, just do it. Do one time. What's the worst that can happen? It, you're not going to be set back any farther than what you already are, and you may get some really great names, and this may be a boost to your family and your business. So I, I say give it a try, and you'll, you'll quickly learn whether it's something you want to do again or not. But if you guys have any more questions, I think once we shut this, I, I don't think the question's uh, will come up. So you can post an anointing nations. Carla and I are both in there. So, all right. Have a great night. Thank you, Carla, so much for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>